And Vion's business editor, Sumit Chaturvedi, is presently in Davos. He's been getting us all the updates from there, and he earlier caught up with India's petroleum minister, Hardeep Singh Puri, and this is what he had to say. World Economic Forum's annual summit has kicked off in Davos. It is for the first time in two years. It is happening in person. India is also having a contingent there. And uh, we are today joined by Mr. Hardeep Singh Puri, India's Petroleum Minister, who is leading that contingent here. So thanks for talking to us. First of all, uh, how have you been your stay in WEF? How discussions, what were they? And how have you now tried to sell India or uh, as far as energy is concerned? What discussions have taken place with investors and other stakeholders? Forum's major preoccupation is with the number of crises uh, which are uh, in motion. Uh, there is at the center of it, I would say, an energy crisis. Uh, and that energy crisis is anchored in the fact that if you have uh, oil at $110 plus per barrel, then that's a, a warning sign, uh, not just for recession in the industrialized um, uh, democracies in those economies but even in developing countries uh, you see what's happened in countries around India uh, but more than that I think even the United States is facing the highest levels of inflation uh, experience in the last 50 years the United Kingdom has the steepest fall in living standards now navigating through this crisis and you have to do it without exacerbating and um, you know accelerating the other uh, crises because you want to be able to do it. You also want to be able to make the transition because of climate change factors. You also want to make sure that um, there's an abundant supply of food. So fertilizer prices become important. So you have to navigate all these. And also you mentioned one important thing. Uh, we just read that $110 barrel oil is worse than inflation. Can you uh, elaborate on this? No, what I, this uh, yeah. I did mention it and I think I'm not the only one saying it. If oil remains at over $110 a barrel, you're not just looking at inflation. A lot of people have started using the word in the global context of recession with a capital R. Um, I said the United States has the highest levels of inflation in 50 years. Other industrial democracies are facing one in particular steepest decline in living standards since the Second World War. So something has to give. Because if you do go in, if the global economy does go into recession, what are you going to face? You're going to face an all the economic recovery post COVID will be lost. But more than that, if the global economy goes into free fall, <coughs> the demand for oil will go down. That's another way of solving the problem. And prices will come down when there's no demand. <coughs> so I think all of us who are stakeholders in the international community, into the economic exchanges, into the global system, the multilateral system, we need to seriously introspect. A lot of things have to be done. Oil price is not high because there's a shortage of oil. I want to correct that. Oil prices are high because the amount of oil released into the market is less than the demand which is there. And that is what keeps the prices high. Now, there are other factors. You, there wasn't uh, enough investment in uh, X, Y, or Z. But be that as it may, you can go on arguing as to what the causation for the inflation is. You can go on arguing, somebody may turn around and say, well, it's the trillions of dollars of stimulus or the stimuli released into the global economy, which is, it doesn't matter. You will be able to deal with all that, but you cannot sustain global economic re recovery if oil is at $110 a barrel. Uh, also, uh, we just happened to see a uh, crisis in Sri Lanka. Uh, we helped the neighbor, we helped them uh, fetch fuel and all. So going forward, need be, uh, we can give them more fuel. What's, what's from your side? Well, you know, let's be very clear. Uh, the Sri Lankan crisis has um, uh, causation brought about by domestic factors. But once an economy is in crisis, then the price of fuel and the availability of fuel becomes. You have to pay for the fuel. So today, uh, we are um, supplying uh, to Sri Lanka. My oil companies have delivered vast amounts of um, uh, energy to Sri Lanka. Uh, we are doing it against a government-to-government -government line of credit. Uh, I think about $2 billion or so. And uh, we are always ready to help anyone. We supplied vaccines to, you know, so many countries you can't even count them. We have um, uh, formed, uh, sent other forms of assistance, medical equipment, 
uh, during the pandemic. So India is a responsible member of the international community with not only discharge its responsibilities, but as the Prime Minister has shown, uh, India is willing to assume even greater obligations when it comes to uh, crises like these. You also said that India is going to lead the world in uh, hydrogen, green hydrogen. Uh, what makes you confident? Green hydrogen is a, a high priority. We are uh, doing it in mission mode. The Honorable Prime Minister's uh, announcement from the ramparts of the Red Fort on 15th August 2021. And uh, my, my oil companies are pursuing green hydrogen. We are in touch with the catalyzer, uh, electrolyzer uh, manufacturers. Uh, we have to bring the cost of power down, which we are doing in um, ingenious ways. Uh, we are uh, uh, getting our refineries to see what are the further steps they can take to uh, manufacture green hydrogen. And I completely share the views of the those like the U.S. Energy Secretary who talk about one one one, one kilogram for one dollar for ten years. But more than that, I think that consciousness is keeping. But green hydrogen is not the only area. Look at our uh, biofuel blending. We've come from one point four percent in. 2014 to 10% now and we are going to take it to 20% biofuel blending, not by 2030, but we brought the target date to 2025. Gas, the mixture, mix from 6 to 15%, ethanol blending 20%, electric vehicles, electric charging station. So India is on the move and India is being able to make that transition at a time when it is looking after the needs of this large and um, growing population and uh, the economy firing on all six tens. About the Russia crisis, well, we saw that has been unfolding since February of this year. Uh, fuel is clearly the top focus. Uh, going forward, how do you see the, the prices at $110 to a barrel? Going forward, if they move up, move up further, what is India's strategy as far as the fuel prices and the crisis is concerned? In so far as international prices are concerned, I think the realization will sooner rather than later, including to the producing countries, that if you keep oil at uh, 110, then you are undermining economic recovery. I think everyone as a stakeholder needs to introspect in a serious way and say how you can contribute to easing. One, first of all, there has to be a, a, you know, a, a, a lowering of tensions. There has to be a cessation of hostilities. And on top of that, you need to deal with these multiple crises which are underway. Fine, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking to us, to the viewers of Vion, and wish you all the very best and very good stay here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.